Oh boy, you don't know how excited I am right now. Welcome back to Akita Aquatics. So, as you've probably seen at the start of the video, I've got some really special fish going into this tank. It's only going to be temporary because I'm planning on getting something much bigger for them. But for today's sake, I'm talking you through the initial tank that I aquascaped for them. So as you can see on the screen, I'm working with lava rock today. I love this stuff because obviously it's so light, so it's easy to build with, and it's really good for harnessing the beneficial bacteria in your tank. Now, to save a little bit of money, here's a quick tip or hack. I use these cotton buds here to place in between the lava rocks. And there's a few reasons for this. A, obviously, aquascaping glue can be really expensive. B, it helps block any gaps to stop gravel or aquasol moving through. And C, it helps to form better bonds between the rocks that obviously don't fit very well when you're aquascaping. Finally, when it comes to gluing, always stick to a product that contains cryanoacrylate because then it's safe for fish. So once I had a few different formations that I was happy with, I started laying it into the tank adding more cotton wool buds where necessary to block areas that I didn't want to pass through. Finally, in the background, I wanted foundation rocks to be placed in so that my bogwood could sit on top comfortably. Now on top goes the bogwood. Now you do have to really pre-soak bogwood for a long time to get it to sit. Uh, even after three days of being in a bucket, it still wasn't ready and still wanted to float. So I do have to place a rock on top. With the angling, what you want to make sure that you're looking for here is that your bog wood, your center piece of your aquascape is facing in a certain direction. So because this was a cube tank, I wanted the point of the bog wood to point towards the actual corner of the tank. So it gave it that 3D element. Finally, make sure that the branches left over follow a similar direction or a 45 to 90 degree angle. What you're looking for here is to create the illusion of depth. Now for the substrate, I'm using an active soil like this. This is fluval stratum. I prefer this because it's very good at lowering the pH, which is something I want to do for the fish that I'll be keeping. A general rule when planting is you want to go for around two inches high as your minimum. You can also choose to add root tabs into this nutrient soil to give it that extra benefit, which is what I usually do. Now for the front area of the tank, I went with a very light colored pewter sand. This would give a really nice contrast against the dark substrate behind. So take one final look to make sure you're happy with the tank and then you can start on with the planting. Firstly, I applied Java moss to the top of the bogwood. So in the mid ground, I planted Echinodorus uh, magladensis. I had this left over from another tank. Uh, really good at growing to not too high, uh, but spreads really fast and will fill in all those gaps uh, towards the back of the tank. Then Anubius Nana, which is just perfect on all levels and so robust to work with. For planting in the foreground, I went with Pagostamon Helferi. This plant's known for staying quite small, but branching out to give more of that bush effect. And for a final pinch of salt, my personal favorite, some Busa Philandra. Now, before we go and fill the tank up with water, why not take the time to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon. Thanks. So here's the tank two months later, had lots of time for the plants to get some good growth, beneficial bacteria to swirl its way around the tank, and the fish are in. Since then I've added some java fern for some height, some retala in the background, and obviously a nice healthy dollop of katapa and jack leaves for the fish. They are a really rare species of gourami. Uh, one is more commonly known as the samurai gourami and the other one, the licorice gourami. You're going to get a future update video with a species profile about both fish, how to care for them, uh, and requirements that you might need if you wanna obviously keep them yourselves. Super pleased to get hold of these, and I can't wait for you to see what I've got in the next video. Thanks.